Alright, so something you guys have been asking me for a while now is to make a video about more affordable IPCs. This is why in today's video we are going to take a look at some IPCs that in my opinion are worth checking out if I were on a tight budget. So without further ado, let's get this video on the road. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to Video Observatory. In order to make it easier to pick IPCs for this list, I would like to propose a budget of maximum 150 bucks. And here I will be looking both at European and US prices as best I can. But why 150? Well, partially because that is a reasonable amount of money you should be considering spending on an IPC if you are looking for good quality and partially because this is where oftentimes good mid-range eyepieces can be found on sale. But don't worry, cheaper options did make this list too. So let's start with short focal length eyepieces for high power observations. These would be the eyepieces you typically use to observe the planets of our solar system like Jupiter, Saturn, Mars. For this type of observations, I value the optical performance in terms of sharpness and color accuracy more than the width and the flatness of the field of view. This is because planets will appear small in the field of view no matter what you do. Having a wide field of view is in my opinion less important than image quality. So the first entry in this category is also one of my favorite budget eyepieces, the 6mm 66 degrees gold ring. This eyepiece is being sold by many companies such as Omegon, TS Optics or Sviboni for example. While the brand is oftentimes different, the specs and the performance are the same. This eyepiece is capable of offering bright images that are sharp, especially in the center of the field of view. Contrast is good as well. Even though the 14.8 mm long eye relief could be a little longer and the viewing angles could be a bit more forgiving, the 6 mm gold ring makes for a good affordable choice for anybody who is looking to upgrade the standard eyepieces that usually come bundled with a telescope. Next on my list is a nice planetary IP series with a popular six lens in four groups design adopted by multiple brands such as Omegon, DS Optics and others. Omegon calls it Cronus WA for example, while TS Optics calls it HR. This is an inexpensive eyepiece with decently corrected lenses and a 60 degrees wide apparent field of view, capable of delivering good center sharpness while maintaining decent contrast levels. While the apparent field of view could be a bit wider and the eye relief of 16 mm a bit longer, this eyepiece does offer good value for its asking price. Another great option is the SLV series from Vixen. If you can live with a relatively narrow field of view of only 50 degrees, then you would be hard pressed to find better corrected optics for below 150 bucks. As a result of the excellent transmission rate, the views delivered are bright, sharp and with good contrast levels. For their SLV lineup, Vixen employs lanthanum glass, which has a high refractive index, leading to a better color accuracy compared to other eyepieces in this price segment. Thanks to the twisting eye guard and the generous eye relief of 20 mm, the viewing experience in general is very nice and comfortable as well. The next two entries on this list are definitely more expensive, featuring an MSRP between 150 and 200 bucks, which is significantly more than our budget of 150. But oftentimes they can be found on sale, where prices dip well below 150 US dollars. This is why I want to include them in this overview. I'm talking about the Hyperion series from Bader Planetarium and the 82 degrees lineup from Explore Scientific. The 5 and the 8 mm Hyperion are excellent mid-range eyepieces capable of delivering bright, contrast-rich views that are sharp right up to the edge of the field of view. 
the lenses are also well corrected so that almost no chromatic aberrations are introduced to the system even when observing very bright targets such as Venus or Jupiter. If you are thinking that all this sounds good, but a wider apparent field of view would be nice, then take a look at the 82 degree series from Explore Scientific. While the Explore Scientific manages to offer similar optical performance as the Hyperion, it does this by featuring a significantly wider field of view. The two areas where it lags behind the Hyperion though, is on one hand the flatness of the field of view, here the views through the Hyperion appear flatter, and on the other hand a significantly shorter eye relief, 15.7 versus 20 mm for the 6.7 mm version. Alright, now let's move over to eyepieces with a medium focal length. This would be eyepieces suited for medium power observations of the moon, planets and smaller DSOs where you need a bit more magnification than it's normally the case. First on the list would be again the 66 degree gold ring eyepiece. The 15 mm version shares the same positive traits as the 6 mm mentioned before while allowing for a wider true field of view thanks to the longer focal length. If eye relief is more important to you than apparent field of view, then take a look at the 12.5 mm LE planetary from Omegon. The 20 mm eye relief makes sure that the viewing experience is very comfortable even if you wear glasses, while the 55 degrees apparent field of view is a bit narrow for this focal length, the LE planetary more than makes up for this in terms of image quality. Its seven lens in four groups, optical design is capable of delivering views that are sharp almost across the entire field of view and have great contrast levels as well. Another great eyepiece is the 15mm ultra flat field or UFF from APM. This eyepiece features well corrected lenses that allow for contrast rich and almost aberration free views. The field of view is sharp and very flat, which results in an immersive viewing experience even though its width of 65 degrees isn't that wide. The only downside being the somewhat short eye relief of only 16 mm. Even though its apparent field of view of 50 degrees could be very well considered as being too narrow for this focal length range, the Vixen SLV eyepieces manage to more than make up for this with an otherwise excellent optical performance. Just like the short focal length options, the 10 and the 12 mm versions share the same positive characteristics as mentioned earlier, making it a great choice for any setup especially if you are used to observing with plosals. The next two entries you already know from the previous focal length category, the Bader Hyperion and the Explore Scientific 82 degrees. And as mentioned earlier, while the MSRP for both is above the budget limit set for this video, both can be found on sale for well below that. So keep an eye out for the 13 and 17 mm Hyperion and the 14 mm 82 degrees. All right, now let's move on to the next focal length category, the one for low power observations. Eyepieces in this category are typically used for observing wide objects like galaxies and nebulae, but also for roaming around the night sky. For this, you normally want eyepieces that feature a wide and flat field of view that is also sharp right up to the edge. The ability to produce bright and contrast rich images is also something to look out for in long focal length eyepieces. Color accuracy is arguably less important here since the human eye won't be able to perceive much color information coming from DSOs anyway, no matter how big the telescope. Some very faint hues of green and blue might be visible with extra large reflectors, but usually that's it in terms of color information. With this in mind, I would like to mention the 19mm premium flat field eyepiece from Omegon. The same design is being sold under the TS Optics brand as well. 
costing only 79 bucks. This wide field eyepiece is capable of delivering sharp views, great contrast levels and good color correction thanks to its ED element and good coating applied to all air to glass surfaces. The party piece here being no doubt the moderately wide but very flat 65 degrees field of view. The only compromise worth mentioning is the not so long eye relief of only 16 mm. This might pose some problems for eyeglass wearers. Next on the list is the Swan lineup from Omegon. The same design can be found under the SVA name from Apertura or Panaview from Skywatcher. All eyepieces in this series are good, especially the 32mm version. The fully multi-coated 5 lens design delivers great contrast and brightness levels while keeping its 70 degrees apparent field of view sharp right up to the edge. The smooth twisting eye guard combined with the extra long eye relief of 25mm and the forgiving viewing angles allows for one of the most comfortable observing experiences you could ask for. The 26 and the 38mm versions both share the same positive traits, only at different focal lengths and are definitely worth checking out as well. Another eyepiece series worth considering is the aforementioned ultra flat field from APM. The 18mm version costs well below the 150 US dollars mark and manages to offer a 65 degrees wide and very flat field of view. The optical performance is just like with the 15mm version pretty good. The 18mm version even manages to improve on the one downside its sibling suffers from, the eye relief. It's 20mm long in this case and this is plenty even for eyeglass wearers. Better still is the 24mm version of the UFF. This is my favorite option out of the whole lineup because it improves on the already great 18mm version by featuring a generous 29mm of eye relief and by being even more tolerant when it comes to eye positioning. It's also maxing out the specs possible for an eyepiece with a one and a quarter inch form factor, which makes it compatible with almost all telescopes on the market today. The only problem, if you want, is that its MSRP is slightly above our budget limit, but this eyepiece as well can be found oftentimes on sale, so I thought that it's worth keeping an eye on it. Even though I've already mentioned the next entry on this list a couple of times until now, I want to do it one last time. I'm talking about the Hyperion from Bader Planetarium, this time in the 21 and 24mm focal length configuration. They share the same great optical performance as the rest of the series and are definitely worth considering, especially if they are on sale and thus below our budget limit. All right. Let's take a look at the last category of eyepieces for this video, the variable focal length or zoom eyepieces. While zoom eyepieces tend to have some major drawbacks like short eye relief and a narrow field of view, they also are capable of one special party trick that in some cases can offset all drawbacks. Their focal length is variable and can be freely adjusted on the fly without the need to change the whole eyepiece. I've tested a few affordable zoom eyepieces over the years and my two favorites and the ones I'm still using today are the SV215 covering the short focal length spectrum from 3 to 8 millimeters and the SV171 covering the medium and long focal length spectrum from 8 to 24 millimeters. So the SV215 is great for planetary observations and not only by zoom IPC standards. It is capable of delivering sharp, bright and contrast rich views at any focal length in its range while remaining almost completely par focal, meaning that only minor adjustments to the focuser are necessary while changing the focal length. Its only major downside being the very short eye relief. 
10 millimeters can feel uncomfortably short when trying to take in the whole field of view at once, so keep this in mind. On the other hand, the SV171 is a good affordable zoom eyepiece. Sure, its field of view gets progressively smaller as the focal length increases, which is just counterintuitive, but this is an optical limitation of such zoom eyepieces. But other than this, the views delivered are bright, sharp and with good contrast. The eye relief is also on the longer side and the twisting eye guard allows for a comfortable viewing experience. Alright, so these were some of the eyepieces I had the chance to test over the years and that at least in my opinion are worth checking out if you are on a budget. So which ones are your favorites? Let me know in the comments below. Alright, that's been it. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.